The following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is a Friday, the start of a new weekend here in the X Zone. I hope that each and every one of you has a great holiday weekend. Um, to me, any Friday and Saturday is a holiday weekend, so have a great weekend. Be safe, be careful, and remember if you drink, please do not drive. My uh, Before we get to my guest this hour, who is Robert Temple, uh, in the news today, another startling event in the ongoing case of who is spying on who and why. Uh, earlier today, the United States Air Force shot down a object, unidentified object, they said, the size of a car off the coast of Alaska. Now, up until now, nobody knows where it is from, what it is, but they did shoot it down. Um, so the saga continues. Who knows what comes next? At least they shot it down instead of letting it gather days and days of intelligence data like they did with the Chinese balloon that they finally shot down over uh, the Atlantic near Myrtle Beach, off the shore of Myrtle Beach. And by the way, a lot of listeners sent me an email asking me why the Canadian government didn't shoot down the uh, the balloon as it was crossing Canadian uh, airspace. Well, it's very simple explanation. According to our sources at the Canadian Armed Forces, there is a uh, an agreement in effect because Canada is part of NORAD that the decision to shoot down an object has to be um, made by NORAD. And at the time, even though uh, President Biden was thinking about shooting the object down, unless NORAD concurred, the object would not have been shot down. And NORAD believes they did the right thing by letting it go away from populated areas. Mind you, it hovered over Maelstrom Air Force Base, where we have a number of nuclear missile silos there. I guess they didn't think that was important enough to shoot the thing down. That's why I don't run for politics, because I would probably have shot it down and caused a fuss and stopped it from gathering the intelligence that we don't know how much of the intelligence it did gather got back to China. But that's for another show. My guest this hour is Professor Robert Temple, and he is in the United Kingdom. And Robert, welcome to the X Zone, and uh, thank you very much for joining us at this very early hour in the UK. Well, it's great to talk to you, Rob. And uh, it's a pity about Montana getting ignored like that. You know, not enough people pay attention to Montana. Yeah. Senator John Tester, he should have seen to this. He should tell NORAD what to do, a thing or two. Well, yeah. Uh, what it is doing is they're saying that NORAD needs to update its equipment. <laughs> I guess the strings and the tin cans don't work anymore, Robert. Oh, well, you know, they've got this unidentified equipment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the funny part is 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 that uh, going back I th I think it was in the seventies when um, over Maelstrom Air Force Base they claimed that an object actually uh, disabled missiles in the silos uh, as reported by Doctor I'm sorry Captain Robert Salas in his books and uh, here we have once again Maelstrom Air Force Base being the target of of uh, surveillance. What do you think about the Chinese uh, possibility of doing all this, uh, Robert? Well, um, I'm uh, I'm quite uh, familiar with the Chinese. I've spent a lot of time there in the past, and uh, I'm very fond of the Chinese people mm -hmm. and Chinese culture. So um, um, I tend to give them the benefit of the doubt. But uh, uh, if they're sending uh, balloons over the United States, it might be what you call uncool. Yeah. It reminds me of the Fugos uh, at the end of uh, World War II. Japan sent over nine thousand, or launched nine thousand balloons from their from their shores, that uh, actually made their way to the United States. And uh, you know, when you look at the 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 correlation between the balloons as well as the 
uh, UFO sightings, there, there's a great correlation there, you know, like dates, times, and places all add up. So who knows? Years ago, uh, Robert, I said that Roswell, New Mexico, the alleged crash of a UFO was actually a balloon, and I looked at Project Mogul. Now, the people told me that I should be looking somewhere else because it had to be a UFO. Oh, they say <clears throat> sometimes in New Mexico, Roswell is uh, Ros Unwell. <laughs> well, I, I, I often wondered, what, was, what would Roswell, New Mexico be without aliens and debris fields all over the place. It's one hell of a PR stunt, a stunt to call attention to themselves, isn't it? It is, and it's worked successfully now for over 50 years. And all that fake wreckage that the locals strewed all over the desert, um, it's, it's called exhibitionism. I think it's called littering. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, tell, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, sir. Oh, well, that would be embarrassing. Um, well, <laughs> that's my, why we have the disclaimer at the front of the show. <laughs> uh, there's no violence and nudity over here, you know. We don't take our clothes off and we never hit each other. So, <laughs> it's kind of disappointing. Well, my pronouns are he, him. That That's hmm. something everybody really needs to know now, all this woke nonsense. That's about all there is to say about me, except I sit around sometimes and I read read books and I write. Books. Oh, come on! You're you're, you're a professor. Uh, you know, we do de you deal in scientific uh, historic. You're a his scientific historian, specializing in research and ancient civilizations, astronomy, archaeology, physics, and more. Now, What's the more been, part? You've been cheating, Rob. You've been reading about me. Oh, I'm sorry. Shame on me. <laughs> well, so. The, the, the reason why we're talking uh, tonight is that mm -hmm. I uh, brought out um, a new book called A New Science of Heaven, which we desperately need because of the fact that um, the universe is not made of atoms, but our physics deals with atoms. So we need a new physics, mm -hmm. uh, basically a, a, a much more elaborated plasma physics because the universe consists of 99.9% .9 plasma not atoms. Plasma is not made of atoms. So that's a bit of a shockeroo. And the trouble is that the public are not being kept informed because uh, there used to be a lot of science writers and people trying to communicate with the public to keep everybody up to date. But they seem to have all died off now. And, um, and so the public are, are left in a state of what some people would like to encourage, namely mass ignorance. That's not good. Mm -hmm. I believe in an informed public. So I've spent years putting all this information together, um, almost none of which is known by the public, to give them the true picture. And that's why I call it a new science of heaven, because um, heaven isn't what we thought it was. I mean, heaven in the sense of the heavens. Sure. And, and so it's 99.9% .9 made of something other than atoms. So what is this stuff called plasma that it's made of? It comes in different forms. It can be gaseous, it can be liquid, it can be solid, it can even be plasma crystals. But it's not made of atoms, it's made of particles. So electrons, protons, and um, things called ions, I-O-N-S, which are sort of almost atoms, but not quite. Or uh, scientists might refer to them as incomplete atoms. The reason being that they either have uh, too much charge or too little charge, but it's not balanced. So this gives you a new view of, of the universe that it's all based on positive and negative charge and electromagnetism, which is infinitely more powerful than gravitation. We had that very brilliant scientist, um, Albert Einstein, who came up with a theory called general relativity, which was all about gravitation, which we tend to call gravity in ordinary talk. And, um, and everybody's been going down the gravity path. Right. And and they want to have quantum gravity and all sorts of gravity. The thing is that electromagnetism is the real force of the universe, and plasma is the real substance of the universe, and it does not behave like atomic matter. So that's why we need this new science. Now, I've written a book that can be read by anybody who doesn't know any science at all. Um, that was not easy, but I believe in communicating with everybody. Sure. I do not, I do not like self-appointed elites and pompous people who think you know they are the ones 
and uh, we're not going to tell the, the stupid uh, folk, you know. Um, I, I hate all this elitism that goes on. Right. So my book is for the general public. And I've done a, um, an audio book as well, which I recorded also myself. Um, so um, you, people who like to listen and rather than read uh, can listen to it in the car on a long journey or whatever. Right. And, and, and I'm trying to get all this information across. Now, you have a great interest uh, and a longstanding one in UFOs, for instance, and all kinds mm -hmm. of phenomena. Yeah, so sure. part of what I've explained in my book relates directly to that. Robert, before we go to the uh, break that's coming up very shortly, what evidence have you uncovered that actually suggests the universe may have some level of consciousness? Oh, uh, well, that's the big one. Yeah. It, it, uh, the fact is that um, plasma, which has dust in it, which it mm -hmm. needs to have to be interesting, is known as dusty complex plasma. It's quite different from uh, hot plasmas. It tends to be cold because it's out in space, although it can be hot. And um, the laboratory experiments carried out by some of the more advanced plasma uh, physicists, such as Professor Tsitovich, the Russian chap who has un unfortunately died. He was the most brilliant of them. Um, and um, a lot of these guys are Russians, but a lot of them now live in Germany and in America. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we haven't got a tame Russian here uh, for plasma science in Britain. So we uh, feel kind of sad about that. And they've proved in the laboratory that um, this kind of plasma uh, can develop uh, by self-organization, as it's called, immense complexity. So that, for instance, a plasma blob the size of you or myself would have an internal structure more complicated than we have. That's how complicated they can get and that they can become intelligence. They can actually involve, evolve intelligence on their own. Wow. Um, and this is also called by the buzzword emergence, which has become a popular uh, word these days. Mm -hmm. uh, without going into all the details, the fact that um, the universe itself is a dusty complex plasma and all the stars, including our sun, are wholly made of plasma um, means that the universe has the potential also to be conscious and intelligent. And it would be the biggest uh, of the brains. and and mm -hmm it would be the equivalent of um, what is called God by people who uh, use religious terminology, which I try to avoid in my book because I don't want to trigger anybody. Sure, but... understandable and respectable. Mm. All right, Robert, please stand by. You and I have to take our first break. And Exonation, our very special guest this morning, all the way from the United Kingdom, is Professor Robert Temple. His website is wwwrobert temple Dot com. And this is the X-Zone. I am Rob McConnell, and we are coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario. And we're coming to you around the world tonight on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, X-Zone Broadcast Network, and on Channel 54 on Simul TV. And for more information about how you can watch the X-Zone 724-365 on Simul TV, as well as other great programming, just visit their website at www.simultv.com. Dot com. Professor Temple and I will be back after this short break. Don't go away. From the Canada-US border in the southern region of Niagara, traveling north in Ontario's Golden Horseshoe, then, east and west of the Greater Toronto Area, there is growing awareness and excitement as more and more people are starting their day with Beautiful Mind Coffee, the delicious healthy coffee that your brain will love. Made with ethically sourced 100% Arabica coffee, Beautiful Mind Coffee is roasted and ground in small batches, to ensure each bag contains a wonderful full-bodied artisan coffee. Scientifically formulated, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Maca root powder, green tea extract and American ginseng, have been selected for their ability to support good brain health. 
Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Amazon.ca and soon to be available in selected locations near you. In Hamilton, Ontario, Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Livelong Wellness Clinic, located at 189 Houston Street South. Beautiful Mind Coffee can be ordered by telephone by calling 416-436-3675 or 905-536-2450. Why have a good cup of coffee when you can have a great cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee that's good for your brain? For more information on Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit us online at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. And welcome back, everyone. And the Exxon is being brought to you by our good friends at Beautiful Mind Coffee, the coffee that your brain will love at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. My guest this hour is Professor Robert Temple, and we're talking about his new book entitled A New Science of Heaven. His website, www.robert-temple.com. Uh, Robert, where is your book available? Well, the easiest way to get it, I suppose, is from Amazon. Great, and, and including the audio book and the ebook, all the different books. <laughs> I wrote them all, but they come in different shapes and sizes. How many books have you written all told, sir? Oh God, I don't know. Maybe twenty, something like Good that. Good for you! Wow. Um, what, in your opinion, and based on your research and and that thing you do to coin a phrase what role does plasma play in answering many of our unanswered questions about the universe life and existence itself well i think that from the point of view of most people the fact that we ourselves are plasma beings is pretty mm -hmm. important <clears throat> it's known as bioplasma um <clears throat> that is when you're biological and you're plasmas it's called bioplasma that's the word that's used and what this means is that um, we are uh, eternal entities um, uh, made of plasma and that we temporarily in incarnate in physical form, which the physical form being made of atoms, as, as we know, and um, that when we do what's called dying, we revert back to the plasma uh, world, which is essentially in parallel with the physical world while we're here on this planet, and that um, nobody dies which could be good really? news and it could be bad news because nobody wants to die. So okay, right. they don't, they don't get to do that. Mm -hmm. But the bad news is that it means that they're still around um, and they can't not be around. In other words, the suicide's useless. And so you have to come to terms with yourself if you're going to live forever. And the only way to do that is to try to be a better person because otherwise you're stuck with a horrible person yourself. So is it safe to say then, uh, Robert, that the plasma that leaves us at our time of getting rid of this meat suit is what we consider to be the soul? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. The, the, the religious terminology is soul or spirit. Uh, I, once again, I try not to use religious terms. I try to use terms which are neutral, but sure. our bioplasma selves is the same as the soul or the spirit. And I have a whole chapter called the uh, the life flash and the and the death flash, mm -hmm. um, because um, anybody can go to YouTube and see the life flash, which is something that uh, it's a flash of light that happens when the sperm meets the egg, and, and this has been filmed, so you can you can see that anyone can. Mm -hmm. The death flash is um, more difficult <laughs> to film because you can't know when somebody's going to die. Right. But um, many people sitting beside people who have died have noticed the, the mist rising from yeah. them when they die and it floats up to the ceiling. And that's basically the bioplasma uh, body leaving the, the physical body, which, which I like to call a smart overcoat. And overcoats wear out eventually, as we know. Sure. Uh, I, you know, my wife is a, a retired nurse and she has told me about at the time of passing, 
about this mist or, or, or light that emanates from the person as they are in fact passing or returning back to the plasmatic world. Oh, so she's witnessed it many times, has she? Yes, she has, sir. Well, there you go. So you've got the first-hand knowledge of that. Uh, most people don't seem to realize about it. Yeah. Um, the, what this is, uh, the realization that, um, that death is, is not extinction. It is, right. it's, it's transition. A different kind of transition than we read about in the papers today. Sure. You know, I, I've often said during the many years of doing the show that I look at death as going from one part of one book to another instead of one chapter to another. I believe that each, each book has all the chapters that we've lived through this lifetime. And when we do pass on, we just go to the next book like a like a library, so to speak. That's a great way to describe it. I'm very impressed. That That's very, very interesting, Rob. Oh. Um, when I was reading the information that uh, your publicist, uh, Sophia Moriarty at uh, Smith Publicity, sent us, I, something intrigued me, something that you call two plasma, the two plasma cloud system. What is that, sir? Oh, well, that's a big surprise. Back in 1961, these two giant clouds, which don't emit any light out in space, were observed by a Polish astronomer called Kordolewski. That's Kordolewski with a K. And um, because he was Polish, right. Poles have Ks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, they're called the Kordolewski clouds. But then mm -hmm. uh, the Polish government of the time didn't like that, and they made him stop his research, and he kind of died. But in 2019, this was all confirmed. Uh, the, the clouds have been proved that they're really there. And, and each one is nine times the size of the Earth. And wow. they are between the Earth and the moon. Hmm. But not in direct line of sight. So if you look at the moon, you're not looking through the cloud. You're Because they're 60 degrees to either side <clears throat> at something called the L points. And, and these are uh, giant, obviously, because together they're 18 times the size of the Earth giant clouds of plasma and dust so these are dusty complex plasmas and that means that they um will be intelligent as we now know through the work i mentioned earlier um which means that they are the big brains here now they're so huge that the earth moon system is not an earth moon system it's a two cloud system with an earth and a moon thrown in hmm. the earth and the moon are so much smaller than they are well, now, this changes everything, because if we've got these two gigantic intelligent entities between yes. us and the moon, why look for little green men when we've got an inorganic, um, highly intelligent extraterrestrial life uh, between us and the moon? You know, here, here they are. They're on our doorstep. And, and so this brings us again to the subject of UFOs, because um, if you're made of plasma, Blobs of plasma are known as plasmoids, and it's the easiest thing in the world for a, a large or truly gigantic uh, intelligent uh, plasmic entity to dis discharge uh, blobs of plasma, plasmoids, and send them to the Earth and um, carry out surveillance. And so that's why I, I call the glowing UFOs plasmic drones. They're similar to ball lightning, and ball lightning is often a plasmic drone because it's been observed many times uh, to be examining things intelligently. One of the classic uh, examples of that, when a ball, a ball of lightning uh, was seen to be examining a Turkish carpet and following the design hmm. and examining the design of the carpet. Well, now that's intelligent behavior. So somebody's yes. directing that. It, it, they're either being directed remotely or they have uh, software programming on board, which they could easily have, because if you're dusty complex plasma, you've got all that intelligence capacity. And, and the other thing about these huge clouds is that they would have such gigantic computing power, and they're billions of years old, that they would know the whole history of the Earth. And um, be careful, because they're watching and listening now. So yeah. Don't, don't think. <laughs> there you go. Is it possible that these this, this plasma cloud would have the ability to morph itself into whatever shape 
it would it needs to and could this plasmic cloud be what many people in the new age genre call the akashic records the records of everything throughout time yes the akashic records as they're called would be inside those clouds hmm. they would have the entire history of the earth stored away they, <clears throat> and everything that had ever lived on the earth uh, the whole life history and of course they would have everything that was ever written thought or said or depicted stored in the clouds and um they they would be the equivalent of what people call the akashic records yes so it seems that the research that you are doing uh, and your and your book is opening up an entire new way of looking at things and and i love it and congratulations to you sir well thank you rob of course that's why i called it a new science of heaven because it is basically a new science yeah and it's, there are some plasma physicists at work. Mm -hmm. A lot of the work is um, confidential because right. plasma is used to deposit circuits on microchips and nanochips. So that's commercially sensitive. And then you've got um, the attempts to con contain nuclear fusion reactions for the sake of energy. Um, and uh, they use plasma to try to contain that because it couldn't be contained by any physical matter that would melt. And then there are all the many military uses, for instance, um, pinches, as they're called, of plasma are used as triggers for atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. And, and, and <clears throat> there are countless uh, sensitive aspects of plasma, which is one reason why the public doesn't know about it, because they've got the companies don't want to let you know their trade secrets. Um, you've got the energy people struggling to contain fusion and they haven't been successful and they've been doing that since the 1950s without success. And I, I don't know if it will ever work. Nobody knows. And then we've got all the military things. And then we have the further thing was, is that if you've got these intelligence cloud, intelligent clouds r right on the doorstep, this becomes what they call the number one security issue for the world. Yes. Um, are these huge intelligent entities friendly or unfriendly? Well, I think the answer to that is obvious. If they were unfriendly, we wouldn't be here. Definitely. So it, it, the assumption is, is very clear that um, they, must be, they must be wanting us to make it, and we're, that we're under observation, and we probably constitute a fascinating experiment for them. Exonation, uh, our guest this hour is Professor Robert Temple. He is in the United Kingdom. His website is robert-temple.com, and the name of his new book that is available on Amazon is A New Science of Heaven. Robert, please stand by. You and I have to take our break at the bottom of the hour, and Exonation will both be back. Uh, so whatever you do, don't go away. And in fact, if you are going away, I just hope it's for a cup of beautiful, beautiful mind coffee. We'll be back. Don't go away. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, simultv.com, simultv.com. What's simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com.
And we're back, and I'm happy to report that over the last half hour, there have been no more unidentified objects off the coast of the United States or Canada, and there have been no more Chinese balloons shot down. And I, I wonder what this is going to do for the latex balloon industry. Mm. Well, what everybody needs yeah. is, is drink a lot more beautiful mind coffee. Ah, uh, you're catching on. You're catching on. Now I know why you're a professor. And you know um, what's you know what's written on the other side of this cup? Simul TV. <laughs> and how do you spell that? <laughs> oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> Exonation, uh, Professor Robert Temple is our guest, and uh, thank you so much for joining us, Robert. It's a great pleasure talking to you, and I wish you much success with your new book, A New Science of Heaven: How the Science of Plasma Physics Is Shedding Light on Spiritual Experience. Wow. It's available on uh, Amazon.com, uh, by the way, Exonation. Something else that I found very interesting uh, in the information that uh, you were, you had sent us is you uh, apparently there's a fascinating way that plasma can explain the usual way COVID and other viruses travel around the world. Well, um my friend, uh, Professor Chandra Vikramasinghe, uh, which, by the way, is a Sri Lankan name. Don't try and pronounce it. Um, and we're working on a paper. We, we've done numerous papers about the COVID virus mm -hmm. with, with a, a variety of colleagues. And um, one of our main points is that uh, we believe, which is pretty well accepted now, that the virus <clears throat> has been spread by winds. It's through the air. And or so, Chinese balloons. Oh, we don't mention them. And, and so um, the idea that we're working on now, it, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem to really have uh, occurred to microbiologists, and I don't know why, is what, what happens when viruses are charged, that is, negatively or positively? Because as you know, electricity is made of electrons and it's sure. negative charge and so on. So what if the viruses are charged? especially if they're being transported on the winds and subjected to um, the effects of the ionosphere, for instance, uh, uh, and uh, energy coming from the sun. Um, you know, uh, the earth is positively charged and um, local uh, rain is negatively charged. The charges are different on um, uh, flowers and bees, uh, charges everywhere, but a lot of people don't pay much attention to that. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a paper on viruses being charged and, and what, what happens when that's the case. So if the COVID viruses, these great masses of COVID virus are being transported on the winds, um, if they're charged, now I see you're looking out for them there, Rob. You're quite wise to do so because- I was I, looking for the balloons. Uh, no, no, that's the viruses that you're seeing. They're coming, in, they're coming in now. I, oh, I can see them behind you. <laughs> no, don't worry. I, I'm just teasing Rob. I'm I know. Rob. Okay. <laughs> but you never know. You're a professor. You're smarter than I am. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Rob. Oh. You've been, you've been uh, very successful on the air for many a year, raising all kinds of strange subjects. So you probably know more than I do. I don't know. I don't take compliments very well. Thank you. <laughs> I just had to just had to let that one sink in. So would this also work with other diseases and viruses that we've had throughout time? For example, the black plague and, um, yes, yes. Uh, electric charge has been neglected mm -hmm. by all the microbiologists from what I can gather. And there are many occasions when charge is, is in the air. For instance, uh, um, if you're near an electric device, it would um, either attract or repel charged viruses. Nobody's studying this. Wow. It's so obviously important. They should be studying it, but it hasn't occurred to them. Well, aren't, aren't there studies that have been done by the medical and scientific community where there is a higher rate of cancer with people who live closer to high tension wires? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's terrible. And really, don't live under a power cable. You're asking for trouble. Is, uh, is this part of where we're going with the plasma? 
Well, the, uh, studying and learning about the plasma helps you understand the, the dangers of electromagnetic fields, which are very right. strong and which are near you because mm -hmm. they, would, they would affect the functioning of your brain and your right. entire nervous system. And they could uh, do damage to your immune system and have all kinds of bad effects. But you see, people don't give enough attention to this. There are n numerous books about electro pollution and so on. Right. But uh, most people don't read them. And uh, the research is there, but uh, a lot of commercial uh, concerns don't want you to know that it might not be such a great idea to stick those white things inside your ears, which have magnets in them. So oh. that magnets inside your skull to affect your brain because it's convenient to be able to hear right you're going to want to have something at least have the, the headphones on the outside of your head don't stick them on the inside yeah. so, things are so obvious but nobody's thinking about them and yet it could affect your life your health your death my wife and i were at costco the other day and i was surprised by the number of people who were shopping and talking on their iPhones and cell phones as they're plastered to the side of their heads. And I always thought, I remember when the big news was that you don't put them beside, you know, the phone to the side of your head because of the, the, the way that the, the cell phone transmits and receives its data. That's absolutely right, Rob. Yeah. The fact is the public are not being warned about any of this because it, it affects the commercial interests of numerous companies. I won't name any or even identify what sort of companies because you can figure that out for yourself. But the fact is yeah. that the public are being uh, kept intentionally in ignorance about the dangers of all these uh, powerful fields that we're all exposed to now by Wi-Fi, for instance. Mm -hmm. And yet there's been this precipitous decline in male fertility in the United States. Male fertility has apparently gone down by 60% with wow. the decades. And, and it seems that it's due to all the influence of the electromagnetic fields. Now, guys who uh, want to look cool, they hang their, uh, their cell phones on their belts, dangling near a certain area that might mm -hmm. impair their fertility. Just figure that out. You, you don't want to put your, your cell phone in your jeans pocket. You don't want it dangling from your belt. You want to keep it away from where the sperm is Sure. Moving. Well, you Otherwise, see, I mean, during, mm -hmm. uh, during the commercial that we played for Simul TV, there was a guy wearing a tin foil on his head, and maybe we should wrap up the genitals in tin foil. You know, just like they do at the at the at the baseball game when you get your hot dog, it's wrapped up in tin foil. Now we don't want violence and nudity on this show. Okay. <laughs> just calm down, Rob. All right, all right. I'm calm. I'm calm. Take that tin foil off your head. Well, that's my white hair. <laughs> oh, right, right. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, it, mm. it looks really good, Rob. <laughs> um, why do why do you think that there there are companies like Apple? Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that because they. Oh no, they, that's an ad. Yeah, yeah, or, or any of the other electronic companies that. No, it's that, not a that, It's a fruit. It's a fruit. It's a fruit. Yeah. Oh gosh, there I go. I'm going to get an email from the LGBT now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is that a radio station? Yeah. Yes, it is. It's 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 somewhere in Pafudnatuk. I understand. Uh, I lost my train of thought. For God's sake. thanks, Robert. Let me ask you this question: D Does does what we understand now, thanks to your book, prove that reincarnation is possible? Because if if plasma never dies, and we were talking about the the uh, plasma clouds, how they have the possibility of, of morphing into other objects, is it possible that the people who believed in reincarnation or still do believe in reincarnation are well, being validated by this research? Oh, definitely. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I believe that there's no way to escape the fact that uh, we survive death, but we don't just go drift off into some um, rather amorphous um, spiritual world. I'm, uh, there is another world, and I think mm -hmm. that it's a highly uh, stratified 
uh, depending on how good you are. But the, the thing is that uh, <clears throat> we keep coming back into this very limited physical form with all the obstacles that we all know about in yeah. life. It, you know, it's difficult living on planet Earth it or is. Any, not any planet. And so we do this in order to learn and evolve and test our character, because I think the test of character is the central thing. It doesn't matter if you're famous, because that means nothing. It doesn't matter if you're rich, because it, it's only um, of significance while you're still alive. On, right. on in your body and and all these things that everybody's obsessed by and thinks so important they're all really unimportant the only thing that really matters and, and it's more intelligent and more important than your intelligence is your character are you good or are you not good you've got to be a good person you've got yeah. to be kind you've got to be compassionate you've got to think about others feelings You've got to help everybody that you can within reason. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't mean you have to go rushing out to Turkey tomorrow to help with the earthquake. As much as you wish you could, you have to be practical. Sure. But you have to be a good person. And, and, and I want to stress that you can be a good person within very narrow limits. If you are, say, physically disabled, so you can't really get about very well, mm -hmm. you have limited mobility, if you are nice to your carer, you are a good person. And if you're a mother and you take really loving care of your children, you are a good person. This is more important than being president. You have to be good. That's what it's all about. Stand by, Robert. We have to take our final break. And Nation, our guest this hour, is Professor Robert Temple. His website is robert-temple.com. He's the author of A New Science the, a new science of Heaven. It's available on Amazon.com. And once again, uh, the website is robert-temple.com. We'll be back as we wrap up this hour here in the X-Zone from our broadcast entrance studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. <music> From the Canada-US border in the southern region of Niagara, traveling north in Ontario's Golden Horseshoe, then, east and west of the Greater Toronto Area, there is growing awareness and excitement as more and more people are starting their day with Beautiful Mind Coffee, the delicious healthy coffee that your brain will love. Made with ethically sourced 100% Arabica coffee, Beautiful Mind Coffee is roasted and ground in small batches, to ensure each bag contains a wonderful full-bodied artisan coffee. Scientifically formulated, Beautiful Mind Coffee is the only coffee blend that contains three herbal ingredients found to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Maca root powder, green tea extract and American ginseng, have been selected for their ability to support good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Amazon.ca and soon to be available in selected locations near you. In Hamilton, Ontario, Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Livelong Wellness Clinic, located at 189 Houston Street South. Beautiful Mind Coffee can be ordered by telephone by calling 416-436-3675 or 905-536-2450. Why have a good cup of coffee when you can have a great cup of Beautiful Mind Coffee that's good for your brain? For more information on Beautiful Mind Coffee, visit us online at www.beautifulmindcoffee.ca. And welcome back, everyone. Before we get back to talking to our very special guest uh, tonight, 
Professor Robert Temple. I'd just like to remind everyone that Paranormal Stakeout with Larry Lawson will be coming back for another season here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Uh, Kevin Randall is putting together some specials for his show, A Different Perspective. And of course, the X Chronicles newspaper for February 2023 will be available later on this weekend simply by going to www.xchronicles.net. It's that plain, it's that simple. And just like XZBN, you can go there without any cost whatsoever. Robert, is, is it possible, I, I was thinking during the break, is it possible that plasma would, ex, would explain some of the biblical miracles? For example, the burning bush that did not burn, but it was interpreted as being on fire. The, the cloud atop of the mount when Moses was handed or came back with the, the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Is it possible that this is where it all generates from, that using the only knowledge they had at that time, they interpreted what is written? Yes. Rob, uh, I'm very glad you've mentioned that. Uh, I'm convinced of that. I have a whole chapter in the book about this business. I examined the uh, the account of Moses and the burning bush, which is extremely interesting. It and is. there are slightly different versions of it um, because uh, the text varies uh, a bit. And um, it's interesting that um, the voice that comes from the burning bush, which is described as, being like a burning bush, but it's not really a burning bush. Right. It's not really on fire, which mm -hmm. sounds like a, a glowing plasmoid. Um, the voice that comes is from what the, what the text calls the angel of the Lord. It's not the Lord. It's the angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I looked, because uh, I, I, I do a lot of research in ancient stuff, and I've written right. a lot of books about ancient cultures and so on. And so um, I looked up... Um, what uh, wh who and what was the angel of the lord it, it, it's undefined you see and um the samaritan sect of judaism they were uh, they were jews who were not friendly with the ones based in jerusalem because they were up in the north and they had their own set up mm -hmm. um they had uh, a name for the end the, the angel of the lord and whose name was metatron so then I kept doing the research, and there used to be many branches of Christianity and Judaism which were known as Gnostic. Right. And there was one sect called the Marcosians, of whom little is known, but it's uh, it, what little survives does contain um, a very interesting description of Metatron. They believe that there are two gigantic entities above the atmosphere. Hmm. Does that remind you of anything? And the yeah. one called Metatron, and that the angel of the Lord was one of these two gigantic, uh, huge, huge, huge intelligent uh, spiritual beings above the atmosphere of the earth. So does this mean that ancient people were somehow psychically intuiting what we're now discovering through modern science? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. I think that, that modern science is catching up with the ancient wisdom which was um, something that people who were able to meditate more deeply back then, because mm -hmm. there was less noise maybe, um, they were communing with the deeper truths in ways that is very rare today. We live in a very busy, noisy world, and, and this kind of thing doesn't go on so much. But in ancient times, when there were fewer people and it was more quiet and you could concentrate more, um, and then there were seers and shamans and, and sibyls, uh, priests and priestesses who were trying to commune with the higher powers. They were getting all kinds of intuition coming to them, which I believe was direct inspiration, so that you can get this, this very strange group of Gnostic Christians known as Marcosians talking about the basically the Korolevsky clouds before there was any evidence that they existed other than psychic perception. I was just going to mention that. It's, I was wondering if that, could this be how, how psychics and mediums connect with the other side? And for mm. example, uh, 
people go to mediums to communicate with those who have departed. Is it possible that this is going through the cloud, so to speak? Well, I think we need to realize that uh, <clears throat> telepathy um, is a universal um, thing. Um, uh, there are many blockheaded people who are ultra materialistic. They, uh, you know, if they think they're being responsible by being what they call hard, uh, hard nosed, and they don't want to admit that there's anything other than physical matter, which is pretty mm -hmm. stupid considering that physical matter is less than 0.001% of the universe. So telepathy is natural to plasma. And you can have uh, something called long range order, uh, which includes the transfer of information across immense distances faster than the speed of light within um, a plasmic cell. I also suggest, because I wrote a book long ago called The Sirius Mystery, um, that the si system of the star Sirius and the system of our sun are in a shared cell, uh, which is, now that I know more about the plasma, I know what I didn't know when I first suggested that in 1998, um, that um, such a cell within the galaxy is easily uh, conceived of on the plasma basis, and it would be surrounded by what's called a sheath, which uh, makes it a contained entity, a sort of super blob, you could call it, right? with containing two star systems, and within that kind of cell, a uh, long-range order can take place, and you can have telepathy between the Sirius system and the, the solar system, and it could exceed the speed of light because um, information has no mass and no energy. Therefore, uh, the E equals mc squared equation, the famous one of Einstein, where energy and mass transform in association with the square of the speed of light doesn't operate because there's no energy, there's no mass with information and information is what is transmitted by telepathy and what are those giant clouds and our in our sun is three hundred thousand times the size of the of, of the earth they are gigantic supercomputers and their intelligence is at the very least an ai type and um and, and so everything that they do would be based on what we call telepathy fascinating robert as 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 always happens when I have an interesting and fun guest like yourself, time goes by so fast, and uh, we've come to the point where I have to, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on your book, uh, A New Science of Heaven. What are, your final, what are your final thoughts for the Exxon Nation tonight before we say goodnight? Well, I think that everybody should be damn lucky that they've got you as a host on this show. Oh, thank you. That's my final thoughts. Wow. And they're good ones. <laughs> I, I would love to have you back on in the future because we still have so much to cover. Uh, so I will be in contact with you. Let's do it again. Thank you so much for sharing your early morning in the United Kingdom. And... Uh, I just can't wait till the next time we meet back here in the X Zone. Until then, take care of yourself, sir. I look forward to that. Thanks a lot, Rob. It's been great to be with you. All right, X Zone Nation. Then my guest this hour has been uh, Professor Robert Temple. www.robert-temple.com. The name of his book is A New Science of Heaven, and it is available on Amazon. dot com. And once again, I'd like to thank. Uh, I believe her name is Sophia Moriarty at yeah. uh, Smith Publicity for helping make this interview happen. Good night, guy. Robert. Take care of yourself. Be well, Bye -bye. my friend. Bye-bye. All right, Exxon Nation, that's it for tonight. I will be back Monday. That's the other side of this weekend at 10 o'clock as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And... Um, I'd like to thank, once again, my producer, Craig Webb, here in studio, uh, Mac Alexander, our programming director, and my senior producer, executive producer, my wife, my best friend, Laura Rogers. So until next we meet on Monday, always remember, XO Nation, take care of one another. If you're not part of the problem uh, solution, you're part of the problem. And finally, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night, everyone.